Hello guys, uh, once again, P.Jot from the VSN team in the F4B Phantom, and I'm flying, well, leisurely above uh, the Mediterranean, more or less, behind is uh, Syria, and I'm just going to fly to uh, Cyprus. And I want to show you what the new um, radar cues look like and how you have to read them to make anything of them. So let's just uh, zoom out and you see there are a bunch of contacts. Some are might be friendly, some might be not friendly. So we will just switch our IFF master switch to anything then off, standby should do, I will always switch it to low. I'll switch my three master modes on, we don't need them for identification, the hostiles, but for us then we'll just take either this switch here, push it up, and you see there's already something glowing green, or you just need to bind it to a button and just push the button, and you see those will be friendlies. The other ones get no uh, we have no response from them. We'll just lock them up a little quick as soon as it works. And here we will just pause the simulation. Here we can see um, the new symbology we inserted into our uh, track uh, scan uh, track. Um, look on the radar you will see uh, two circles the circle in the middle and a circle on the outside this circle on the outside is the closing speed circle you can see here there is a gap in the circle and where the gap points that is your cue how fast you are closing on your targets if it looks like this or even a little bit higher up like here you have maximum closing speed of 800 80 knots if it is somewhere on the right side so a counterclockwise until it reaches the top the top is zero closing speed so you don't get closer you don't get further away you just keep your distance and then you just, just have divide have, have to divide uh, 880 knots by 3 and you will get well a little bit more than 220 knots. Let's say this, a lot more, not 330, but but you you get it. You, you just uh, do the maths. You can uh, just divide it by three, and you know get the closing distances right here. The part that is left of the 12 o'clock position right here that is uh, negative closing speeds uh, until the nine o'clock position. 9 o'clock position is minus uh, 330 uh, knots and that um, negative closing speed decreases or better said it increases until it reaches zero right on the top so it's minus 330 zero plus 880 okay so those are the um, symbologies and now to the middle one this is the dynamic uh, launch zone indicator ring or however you want to call it if it looks like this you are not in range you will get in range when it expands a bit it will expand in I think three steps or maybe four steps so you will figure it out for yourself um, until it is almost as big as the closing speed circle if it's that big, that's your most your best probability of kill. It will shrink afterwards again because if you get closer to the target, your chances don't have to get better because the missile might have to maneuver harder because you're closer and that might not be doable for the missile. So it will get closer again. Of course, you can take shots when the um, target is closer but um, 
I would suggest to just wait for the optimal um, dynamic launch zone indication and fire your rockets then or your missiles and because you will have a good probability of kill. So we'll just unpause and see how this develops. Okay, I'll just give the full afterburner to make a little bit more speed and as you are used to you see the distance on the left of the, of the target cross which tells us it's 14 miles away it might make sense to use a rocket as you see as we use different rockets the dynamic launch zone looks differently now we just take the sidewinders because the other ones are already in perfect range and we'll try to just head on to the target to show you what I mean with the dynamic launch zone. There you see increases, 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 increases and that's the biggest you get. Okay, and there it decreases again, decreases, decreases and we have passed our bogey. I'll pause it again so uh, to have a little bit quick chat about it you just saw that the dynamic launch zone is really a dynamic launch zone it is uh, it depends on the distance it depends on the closing speed it depends on the weapon you chose you know, through your uh, missile selector rotational okay so uh, keep that in mind and uh, of course try to attack your targets when they are in optimal range um, so far to the radar cues. What I did not show you right now is that the little uh, um, single target track cross will turn this uh, greenish blue as well when you uh, interrogate the target. Uh, of course you will just show one target because you can just track one target at once so if you're in, in, in the um, in not in the search mode but in the track mode you will just have one target and you can just interrogate one target if you are in the uh, search mode and have more targets it will interrogate all targets again this might not be as it was in the real F4 Phantom it might be a little bit different uh, there were uh, stories or I read about it that um, IFF well was not that reliable uh, at first so they needed to identify the opponents visually um, it got better b in time so, but uh, we chose to just give you a possibility to identify your opponents and the identification is pretty spot on so we didn't um, build anything in that kind of makes it worse or makes it like sketchy or just won't get you a uh, result of course it may happen when you push the uh, um, identification uh, button that you will not get a result straight ahead then you might have to push it a little bit longer so not, not just brush over it and if there's no return then it's a, it's a bogey just do it once or twice or hold it a little bit longer and then it should work it's because it's uh, the inbuilt uh, identification does not just always give you a response on the very first touch of that button okay so that's it for this uh, video just a little brief update um, on the harm targeting system I won't do a video for it because it's pretty straightforward you get uh, another kind of uh, um, search and lock tone not the aim 9 lock tone you just heard but a little bit another lock tone and it will just pitch up when it has locked the radar source you will not know which radar source is locked because um, the uh, track tracker of the of the um, shrike will just look straight ahead or more like look straight ahead and a little bit downwards and uh, if there is a radar source in its parameters, in its possibility to lock, it will lock onto it. 
you will get the lock tone. Of course, if there are more emitters next to another, you might not hit the one you want to hit. You will just hit the one the Shrike did lock. Okay, so there is no a possibility for you to know which one is locked. So it is always pretty important to know how far your radar source is away and then to really maneuver your plane to look at the radar source because then you will have a pretty good chance to hit the radar source you want to hit. If you just aim in the general direction of it and as you hear the tone just uh, push the uh, weapon release button um, you might attack an EWR which is very far away and the, uh, the Shrike will not reach it because the Shrike has a not that a great um, attack distance but you will figure that out on your own and for me it's time to uh, say goodbye again from uh, our F4 a cockpit. I'm not planning to do any more videos on this one um, because I think we've got uh, the biggies covered all the rest uh, we'll be uh, posting on our Discord channel and have there a little bit um, something for you. Maybe we can update the knee boards to some uh, extent, but that's not yet um, decided. We might do that, or we might just jump to another plane and start working on something interesting, um, which will fit the era as well. We've got some more planes in store for you, but of course everything will take time or will need some time. We can't just uh, wave a magic wand and make it uh, functional. We have to code and uh, model and do everything that is needed for you to enjoy it. Um, thanks a lot for uh, your interest in the video. Thanks a lot for your interest in our F4 mod. Um, to cap it off, uh, we will leave it in this state of development we might add little somethings here and there along the way but a bigger update is not planned anymore because um, it is just it, it's just not um, that a good idea to kind of look like we are competing with the F4E from Hipplo which we are definitely not we just want to get you a little bit a taste of uh, flying an F4 and so we chose the F4B and the F4C which are the older variants and we hope we can get you that taste and we hope uh, you, uh, you enjoy the mod of course as I said in the video before if you are a hardcore fandom uh, fanboy or fangirl you will need to get the heat blur F4E as well because that will be the real deal of course you can enjoy our mod, our mod as well, it's, it's free for you to download and to have fun with it, but I can just recommend to then jump into the real thing and really get yourself strapped in and get the immersion that you will get if you have to do everything the right way and can't take shortcuts. Um, but of course there are those guys, and I'll count myself to them as well, who enjoy a little bit of fun in a good feeling aircraft in a good looking cockpit like ours and do not need the last bit of 100% um, reality okay so I think we got it too late let's say 92.75% and uh, heat blur will just add the other 7.25% um, of reality on top of it and uh, but it's it's worth it. So uh, you will just uh, think about it, and we can recommend it to get it, of course, um, if you can afford it. That's the other thing. So uh, 50 minutes in, a lot of talking, not much info, but as uh, as always, you can just like uh, scroll forward, and then then that's done. So um, thanks a lot for watching. Thanks a lot for your interest. I hope you will enjoy the updated mod. Hope you enjoy the F4 and the other VSN mods, and well, I guess we will uh, see each other, or you will hear me <laughs> in one of the next videos when we start um, getting you news about other upcoming mods or uh, other, other upcoming updates. So, uh, cheers and have a nice uh, flight. Bye!